Okay, so, okay, so, uh, so thank you for watching the video. So uh, basically, uh, we will be talking about IoT security in the next uh, classes. Uh, it will be one of the big sections we will be uh, uh, covering on, and we will be uh, uh, talking about what are the current uh, trends in uh, securing IoT systems. Uh, and, what are the challenges that are existing? So as I think you saw the video, um, uh, the IoT security is a very uh, important uh, thing. And uh, if we take, for example, uh, both the industry and the uh, smart home uh, automations, we, uh, we can uh, actually have a huge uh, attacks to our systems by uh, strange, uh, I mean, other people who are hacking systems. And then uh, if that happens, like our uh, system can totally break down. If it is a power plant, uh, I mean, if one component is attacked, or I mean, if one component is comp controlled by a foreign person or I mean, a jamming person, uh, that can, uh, you know, like uh, lose the control that we have over the system and it can uh, be a very uh, huge threat and damage to our system so just like just as that it can be applied for any kind of iot system and therefore uh, as shown in the video we need to uh, develop both the hardware and the software to uh, make them more uh, secure so we might have to consider all the layers and how the all the uh, security mechanisms will work in the all the layers. So, uh, so uh, basically, uh, the operating system that we are using in the embedded system, right in our microcontroller boards, also has to be uh, incorporated with the security mechanisms. So they are actually developing a new operating system with uh, the security features. Right? Uh, so there are other operating systems also that are popularly used in uh, IoT systems. So we will talk about those operating systems as well uh, in the upcoming classes. So uh, now I would like to go back to this uh, set of questions, right? Uh, so uh, I can remember like uh, in the last class, um, another student asked a question about uh, the constraint application protocol uh, and uh, asked about uh, the COAP having a QoS. So I mentioned that the QoS uh, has not been explicitly defined for the COAP. That means like there are no a standard QoS levels uh, have that have been defined uh, for the COAP. I mean, for the MQTT, we have QoS level 0, 1, and 2. Uh, but for COAP, we don't have such QoS levels. However, COAP uh, uses the, uh, the four types of messages that I explained, which were uh, basically the con message, non message, uh, reset message and acknowledgement messages to uh, ensure the reliability of the communication. So the con message includes uh, sending a request and then receiving a response back from the uh, server. So the uh, in the con message, we'll be receiving an acknowledgement back uh, from the server. So in that case, uh, we can say that uh, the con message is uh, a very reliable uh, communication method uh, where we receive an acknowledgement from the server regarding uh, the re request that we sent, right? Uh, so in that case, uh, uh, so it is said that the quality of the communication has been maintained. So in that case, we can uh, say that the QoS has been uh, achieved using this con message type. 
so so different message types are there so con message non message so out of those two we can say con message is uh, having a call or giving a quality of service uh, to the communication so but uh, qos has not been uh, explicitly defined for the coap method coap protocol right so i would like you to uh, answer these questions right so if you uh, prefer i would actually um, i mean i will uh, i'm hoping to give these questions in the lms in terms of uh, you submitting the answers to the lms itself without uh, writing on a paper and then submitting so i will prepare those questions and upload to the uh, lms so uh, anyway you can uh, try to see whether you can answer uh, these questions uh, and also uh, is there any update regarding your projects and uh, do you have any other questions regarding today's lecture if you have questions please let me know Okay, so actually, I this week's lecture slides I have shared in the elements. Right, previous ones I will not be sharing. Right, so the reason is that I would like you to write whatever the facts that you think is important in your own note. Then you prepare your own note. Right, so normally I have done that for the other classes as well. So therefore, I would request you to write your own note using the uh, video you can download the video you can watch it and you can write down the information right? uh, one thing to note is that like whatever i'm doing for the tutorials will come to the exam right mostly right i will give some tutorial questions right uh, more tutorial questions out of them four will be there there will be four questions in the last uh, I mean, exam, right? So in that, uh, we will uh, uh, get what one of the tutorial questions I have covered and something similar to that, not the exact tutorial question, but something similar to that. Therefore, if you want to get ready for the exam, you can try to do the tutorials and get the information for the uh, questions from the lecture slides and from the videos so on right so i hope it was helpful to you apart from that the assignments in the assignments i will uh, check the sort of the short you know i mean the questions the small questions we might have regarding the content that was covered so far and uh, what i think will be useful for you to know in order for you to you know face an ex interview or exam in the future and get a career using this IUT information. Uh, so you can submit a PDF for these questions if you prefer, but I was thinking to give a, like a question answer sort of uh, questions in the LMS itself, just like giving a quiz. So. I will decide that and I will anyway uh, give a separate submission link for this assignment. Once that is uploaded, you can upload the uh, uh, upload the answers to that. So, uh, so I am normally uploading the recordings of the lessons. So. I think I have not missed uploading a recording. Have I missed some uh, recording? If I have this, let me know. I think I have already uploaded all the recordings so far. Uh, actually talking about the home automation industry in Sri Lanka. 
uh, I have to say that uh, really uh, I don't have a very good understanding about the uh, actual implementation in Sri Lanka. So, um, however, we uh, I think uh, in most uh, I mean home environments they have. Uh, use these uh, already available products like Alexa, Siri, you know, all those uh, like branded products and uh, connected uh, those devices to the internet and form the IoT network. However, we can actually, uh, I mean, see that uh, in other countries we have, uh, we have, uh, we have methods to connect our all our uh, most of our applications or appliances like uh, switches i mean lighting of uh, our uh, homes uh, to the iot network right so i only actually know about what uh, the developed countries are doing actually in sri lanka what is already done is not that much recorded uh, somewhere um so actually in uh, under home industry i think it is a bit low actually i think in sri lanka according to my understanding so uh, we can actually uh connect uh you know like uh, our light switches and uh, kettles and coffee brewing machines uh, washing machines and uh, whatever the main appliances, uh, vacuum cleaners, fridges, uh, those things we can actually connect to our uh, internet using uh, a microcontroller based embedded systems included in those circuits. So we need to actually, uh, you know, deassemble the light switches and we need to include our microcontroller uh, based small circuit, PCB circuit into the switches and we need to make the connection from the switches to the internet. So um, once that is done, we can control the uh, switch on off from the internet. Uh, same thing can be done for the other appliances as well. So uh, implementation of such kind of activities in the home uh, situation level, I'm not that much aware of that in Sri Lanka. But in Sri Lanka, uh, in other countries, we can actually, I think, see that happening. So the microcontroller boards used for home automation. So basically, we, as I, uh, as I understand, they are using uh, multiple boards. So one thing is that ESP32 is very popular, um, and it is used for connecting with the internet. So it is having its inbuilt Wi-Fi and Bluetooth modules. And apart from that, uh, they, they can also use this uh, other communication mediums like Zigbee, LoRa, and so on. So Zigbee-based uh, home automation has been already done in uh, like uh, by other people. I have seen how they are implementing it in their homes. So uh, depending on uh, your application and the communication range that you require, you uh, will be using either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, or then uh, we can use Zigbee if we have a higher communication range than the Wi-Fi. Right? So if you want to go up to 100 meters more than, uh, I mean 50 meters more than 50 meters between maybe 50, 200 meters, we we will be using the Zigbee uh, controller. So in that way, we can actually access uh, many components all around the house. I mean, uh, if the house is big. So likewise, uh, according to my understanding, there is no, um, mostly we can do the smartphone automation. So we can actually search about these uh, controller boards and whatever they are using in the internet, we can see the project that they have done and the components they have used. So the smartphones, we can actually use those Arduino even and uh, 
we can go ahead uh, with the with those boards. Uh, so ESP32, not LCU, Raspberry Pi, and so on. In the industrial scenario, I have mentioned to you that uh, some specific uh, PCL based uh, in PCL incorporated uh, hardware boards have been used in order to address the industrial scenario. So in the industrial scenario, we might have more challenges than the home automation. And then in that case, we use uh, more advanced and uh, more robust uh, controller boards. So Yes, you can actually submit the code uh, for the assignment three without running it on the uh, IDE and checking the errors. It's totally fine, right? Uh, I just want you to just get an idea about how to compile the code or how to write the code and what kind of parameters you need to use in the code and so on. So I will be basically checking your code uh, however, in the project, you will be needing to actually implement it and uh, compile it and check that. So if you have more questions, you can ask. 